Hello YouTube, I am Lightly Salted and welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to our continuing refresh of the U-Boat tutorial series. In the last episode, we learned a little bit about our boat and what it can do. In this episode, we're going to put to sea. A quick note, before you actually take your orders and leave port, this is when you'd want to worry about your crew management, such as their task priorities, schedule, squads, etc. I've touched a little bit on that in a couple of different uh, videos, which I will have linked up in the top right. You've probably already seen one, and I will also have linked down in the description below. So let's go about getting orders. We'll go ahead and grab Patrol Sector BE, and you'll see here it will let you know what is expected of you. You will get 6,000 budgets by traveling in BE-9, BF-7, and travel 2,250 kilometers inside the lit-up square. Our additional objective is to sink enemy trade ships to a total of 7,000 tons, for which we will gain an extra 6,000 budgets and extra reputation. It also lets us know that they are expecting it to be foggy. We'll go ahead and select it. And at this point, you would go ahead and outfit your boat with all the equipment you figure you would want. I won't tell you how to do your job, I'll just let you know how to leave the port. Once you've got that squared away, you can go into the map screen and plot a course to the sector you want to go to simply by right-clicking anywhere inside the green square. And the game will plot you a course. Conversely, as in the long, long ago, we could set a series of waypoints to guide us out of the port and to our area of responsibility by simply right-clicking, holding shift, and making waypoints. In B128, you can simply throw the boat in gear and it will pilot you automatically out to sea. We can simply open our telegraph, engage engines, and off we go. If we check our map, it has plotted us a course out around the jetty and into the Bay of Biscay. Now that we've put to sea, it's important to make sure you are maximizing your fuel consumption. You'll see here we are using 12.5 liters per kilometer, or 5 liters per minute. By grabbing our chief engineer and having him work the engines, as shown in his icon, we can give him two helpers. To cut fuel consumption by 30%, we are now using 4 liters per minute. To add to that, we can grab our second in command, or the skipper, and have them begin working at the navigation station. We go ahead and give him two helpers. And as you can see now, we are saving an additional 20% on our diesel consumption. We are now using three liters per minute. At the same time, if we check our map screen, we will see that our navigation correctness will not drop. Navigation correctness, if it falls to zero, will get you lost. If you are lost, you will be unable to see where your boat is on the map making it almost impossible to get back home. By moving your mouse around in the ocean, you'll see there in the top right of the screen that it will show you the approximate depth of the water. For instance, right here at this location, there's only nine meters of water. Here, there are 16. And this is true of anywhere you place your mouse. For instance, out here, there's over 3,000 meters of water. Very handy when deciding on a course into a dangerous area. If we go to our map screen, we can see that we have an observation site circle. The skipper is currently working observation, giving us a fairly maximized amount of sight. However, by giving him two helpers, we can increase that a fair bit. Not particularly useful when leaving port, but very useful at sea. It's very important to use your radio mode to tune into the radio a few times per day as you could receive orders from BDU during transit. It also doesn't hurt to throw on the radio to keep morale high. Let's get a little further out to sea and explore some of the mechanics of the boat. Let's go ahead and dive by selecting the periscope depth here on the depth meter.
you'll see that we are now using the electric engines, gaining the same kind of bonuses we got by having someone working the electric engines would help, and working the navigation station would help. We are currently burning 5 oxygen per minute. A lot of that has to do with the fact that we are still running at white lighting. Let's go ahead and switch to blue. We now have a 15% modifier in our oxygen use favor. So in this scenario, I have both compressors running, but we are underwater. We are burning through our oxygen very, very quickly, as the crew, diesel compressor, and electric compressor all will be burning oxygen. To mitigate this, we're going to want to turn on the ventilators. As you see here, the ventilation begins increasing their oxygen per minute. The ventilators do not require potassium absorbers to run. They are simply pushing the air around in the boat. It's been a few minutes now, and we are now currently making roughly 51, sorry, 52 oxygen per minute. If we grab our skipper and tell him to put some potassium absorbers in the ventilator, you can see that the ventilation is actually making much, much more oxygen per minute. This comes in handy if you can only run your vents for a short time. However, the ventilator on its own, even without the potassium absorbers, will keep you going for several hours. Bear in mind that the, the potassium absorbers are consumed over time, so you'll want to use them sparingly. We are burning through our batteries very quickly. This is due both to our speed and the fact that the gyro compass is running. If we went ahead and turned off the gyro compass, we will gain ourselves a little extra time. I'll bring us back to the surface. Tanks unblasen. As you can see, our diesel engines are now charging our electric capacity. We also have a new icon. As you can see here, our compressed air reserves are now low. The compressed air is what's used to drive the water out of your ballast tanks. We now only have 70% of our compressed air reserves. Every time you come back to the surface, it's going to be very important to recharge this. If this gets below the amount that it would require to bring your boat back to the surface, you will not be able to surface. You recharge this by using either your diesel, electric compressor, or both. If you use both, it will charge faster. Alright, it is now nighttime, and it's actually a fairly clear night. Very easy to see. Why don't we go ahead and turn darker nights on them, like we talked about earlier. And suddenly, it's much more difficult to see. Remember though, we are at blue lighting. If I go ahead and engage red, suddenly the night is not so dark. If we go ahead and turn darker nights back off, It's very, very easy to see. Something to keep in mind for newer players. As you can see here, Mr. Watcher is heading off to turn off our compressors. Items like the compressors and the pump, once they've completed their task, a sailor will head off to turn them off automatically for you. It's not something you have to remember to do later. Our battery capacity is fairly low, so we're gonna go ahead and surface. Tanks unblasen. If we take a look at our ballast tanks, we are filled 100% with water. This will begin decreasing over time. We have reached our patrol sector. Go ahead and grab your radio officer and call that back into BDU. And you'll see here in your journal that you can take a look at what you're currently supposed to be doing. Standing order is to patrol the sector. We've reached the sector. Patrol begins. All right, folks, that's where we're going to end the episode. That is the basic operation of your boat. Stay tuned to carry on with the refresh tutorial series. Until next time, I have been Lightly Salted. Thanks for tuning in. Bye now.